Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. So, while my other project, the Tamiya 172nd Scale Zero, sits on the sidelines while I wait for some canopy masks to come in, I thought I would make a quick start on the mid-production M3 Lee by Tacom. Uh, this is my first Tacom kit, so uh, we're really looking forward to it. My son got it for me for my birthday this last August. And uh, now it's time to get cracking since my other projects are all done, with the exception of the one I'm working on. So let's take a look in the box and see what's going on. So I'm going to make this review kind of quick because there's there's plenty of reviews online about this kit, but maybe some of the viewers that I have haven't seen them. So I will talk about it a little bit and, um, you know, just not get too in-depth and make it too boring. So with the box, it shows some of the uh, uh, color schemes on the outside. And again, keep in mind, this is the first Tacom kit I've built. So, you know, m this, some of this layout stuff is new to me. Um, you've got the... Uh, these two versions here. Um, and I'm sure there's more on the instructions, which we'll take a look at in a bit. Uh, the kit was released in 2017, and uh, from everything I've heard, it's a really good kit. And there's an early and a late M3 Lee as well, and a Grant. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, they have. Uh, uh, they also have an M31, which is a recovery type vehicle uh, based on the, the uh, Lee um, hull. So I'm going to get to that one of these days as well. A uh, quick diagram here on the side of the sprues. Um, not a whole lot of sprues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine or maybe less if these are connected together plus the large parts. So that is the box. Okay, here's the instructions. And again, bear with me if you're familiar with this kind of stuff. But again, this is something new to me. So I'm going to kind of go through it a little bit here because I haven't really looked at the contents of this box in that much of a de in that much detail. Um, it's typical of most instructions. Um, it has a little bit of information about the vehicle on the cover of the instructions here. It's in English. Um, doesn't have any other la languages on here, so they must. They must have different um, instructions for different markets according to language. So, you know, you know, I don't mind having other languages on here, but it is kind of cool because, you know, they're able to keep the uh, instructions smaller. Really nice line drawing of the vehicle there. Um, really kind of nice. And it's, you know, in booklet form as opposed to, you know, the paper fold out things or the large... Uh, size, you know, book type, booklet type thing. So that's kind of neat. It's kind of compact. Uh, it's made out of some real nice kind of semi-gloss matte finish paper. So, you know, I mean, I always keep my instructions and I'll definitely be keeping these because I like to have them on hand. Uh, then it has usual cautions and stuff like that. Um, it has the paints uh, required and gives the ammo by MIG color numbers. Um, I won't be using those. I'll be using Tamiya, so, you know, no big deal because it's not hard to match that kind of stuff up. Another parts diagram here. Um, some of these have uh, two, uh, like the wheels and suspension parts. There's two sprues of that, two sprues of these other suspension parts. And then it just goes through the assembly process looks pretty good they're really nice line drawings with kind of grayscale coloring to it which kind of helps you know with some um, giving a little bit of depth to the illustrations uh, step three is the tracks and uh, one thing I've heard in people reviewing or talking about this kit some people have had a problem with getting the links to match up exactly at the end. Uh, sometimes they're either like a link or maybe half a link too short. So uh, that's one thing I'm gonna focus on while I'm doing this build. And one of the things I'll be talking about um, to kind of let everybody know how I, tackles that, how I tackle that and to see if I'm successful in getting it to work properly. But uh, it shouldn't be a problem because there's quite a few other people that have had no problem at all with it. Um, a friend of mine 
built this kit and uh, didn't have any problems with the tracks at all. <clears throat> now, I will note that it seems kind of odd um, that um, TACOM wouldn't engineer some adjustment in the rear idler. Uh, Tamiya and some of the uh, Tasca slash Asuka, they have, uh, a, you know, an offset type axle assembly in the back, just like the real vehicle, where, you know, the part that goes into the tank is here, the axle is here, and you can twist it this way or that way to add or subtract tension to the track. So, um, you know, again, that's, you know, not really that big a deal if the tracks fit okay. But I think that might have been helpful for people to have that option so they could get the tracks just so. Uh, the hole parts, again, from what I've seen, they go together really well. It's just something that has to be, you have to really pay attention to so you don't get gaps around these edges because there's lots of angles and uh, plates going together and you don't want to have any gaps because there weren't any gaps on the real deal. Um, one thing that's nice, on some Lee kits or Grant kits, uh, these three plates that go on the back of the upper superstructure, uh, they're three separate pieces. And that's where you can run into trouble because that's just two more uh, joints that you could potentially have you know, a gap and have them not butt up together well. On the TACOM kits, it's a single piece and it's beveled on the inside and very thin on the outside. So all you have to do is bend it into shape like this. So it eliminates those two joints. So that's kind of a nice way to engineer that part. Um, main gun. more of the turret and this is more of the the areas where it's you know it's a really good idea to test fit and double test fit and just make sure everything is lining up uh, so it all comes together squarely and uh, gapless uh, more of this is the rear deck here toolboxes rear of the hull more of the upper uh, engine deck um, more rear parts and then a lot of small parts um, it does come with photo etch uh, light guards which is nice and it looks like it comes with a template to bend it so you get the, the appropriate bend in that and I'll I'll discuss that uh, I'll actually go over that as I'm doing the build and then let's see then it looks like uh, building up the small parts of the the turret and attaching the turret and bingo you have a finished kit all you have to do is paint it so here are the painting instructions now it's kind of small but it's kind of cool uh, there's one two three four Good Lord, five, six, seven different ones you can do, it looks like. Uh, the one I am plan planning on doing is uh, this one here. Um, the Lulu Bell from the Humphrey Bogart movie of 1943 called Sahara. Um, I like that one just because it's pretty plain. It's just got the uh, Lulu Bell on the side, the serial number, and the stars. And, uh, you know, not a whole bunch of extra stuff. So I kind of like the simplicity of that. And I plan on uh, trying to find a decent figure um, to put in the turret of it. And then, you know, you got an ad for the V2 and uh, Hano Mag SS100. And then the back, another line drawing of a front on view. So that's the instructions. Okay, next up we have the decals. Um, they're very nice looking decals. They look pretty thin. They have a little bit of a matte finish to them, but they feel really super thin. And the carrier film is really close to the uh, stars, the national emblems here. Uh, there's a little carryover film here, but in a way that's kind of nice because it eliminates uh, the possibility of tearing. Sometimes if you have a 
real sharp angle around there. You know, if you're not careful, you could tear it potentially. But uh, yeah, they're really thin, so they shouldn't be too problem as far as the weathering and stuff. We'll see. Put them on there and then put a clear coat, and that should diminish some of that a little bit. So that's decals, lots of extra decals too, so you hang on to those and the spares for other kits and other projects. Okay, first of the parts, uh, you got a huge uh, clear part sprue here. Two whole headlight lenses. That could be easily misplaced. Then we have the photo etch. Feels like a good thickness, especially for the uh, the headlight guards. Um, then we have the uh, latches for the air cleaners. Now I just built an M4A1 by uh, Tasca or Asuka, whichever one is right now. And it had these parts as well, but they were super, super thin and very fragile. These, while still looking a good scale size, are quite a bit more substantial. So I should probably not have as much problem with uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth while trying to put these onto the, onto the kit. Um, I think these here are... I'm not sure what those are. They look like valves, valve handles of some kind. Other small parts. So they all look good. And then this uh, screen here for the engine deck. So they look really good. It says uh, TP Tacom M3 family. Okay, here's the first sprue here. And I don't know if that's supposed to be an A or a V. But anyway, there's that one. Uh, it's the wheels and some suspension parts as well as filler cap covers, uh, clevis hook mounts, turn rollers, mostly suspension parts and the uh, drive sprockets. So they all look really nice. Sprue gates are manageable and more importantly and I am so very stoked about this is there are no seam lines on the tread of these wheels that is a wonderful thing because man that is the most tedious thing about most kits especially Sherman or M3 or M4 based kits with these bogey suspension systems with all these wheels there's usually a seam right down the middle and it looks like um, there are no seams like that at all on uh, on those wheels. So I'm really happy. So there's two um, two of these, two of this sprue here for the suspension. Next up, we have the B sprue, which is more suspension parts, and there's two of those. And then we have the D sprue. Now, I'm going to make a little note here, and it doesn't pertain, nor is it important to anything at all, but you have TACOM 2017, number 2085, and the little TACOM logo, and a D, but the D is backwards, and it's like that on all the sprues. The letter is backwards. Weird. So anyway, like I said, I want you to see the TACOM deal. I want you to see this part. But anyway, this is uh, whole parts, the back. Uh, fenders, the upper hull. Um, now I'll make a note or I'll make a comment about the uh, the plastic here. Looks really good. It's kind of smooth in places um, and then rough in others. Like this is a bit of rough and a bit of smooth which, you know, really doesn't mean a whole lot because once you get paint and clear coats and stuff like that, it's it's all going to be good one way or the other. Now, here's something to note that's kind of nice. Uh, you have a hatch here. Um, it's the top hatch. Now, there's no interior, so 
it wouldn't really matter an awful lot but you know you can see the hinge detail here and the latch really nice detail on that and on the inside there's no ejector pin marks so that's kind of cool and there are ejector pin marks on like inside hole parts that you would never see even if there was a an interior so that's kind of nice they thought that stuff out pretty good um these spare track blocks now those have some sink marks in the middle and ejector pin marks on the inside so those could be cleaned up and since they're spares that is probably the part you would see so you'd want to just clean those up but it's no big deal because uh almost every kid on the planet has them somewhere and at least they put those um, and they're shallow enough that they'd be easy to clean up with a blade or whatever but the detail the rivet detail and all that looks really really good then we have the e-sprue which is more hull parts uh, the toolbox parts a lot of small fittings the horn um, grab handles radio antenna base and that radio antenna base looks really good it doesn't look like there's a it doesn't look like there's a uh, seam line on it so that's really nice this um i believe this is the driver's hatch uh viewport nice cast texture on there really nice cast texture on the uh the gun mount here then you have the transmission cover here with some nice uh, detail. Now I'm going to have to look up. I'm not sure how much um, texturing should be on here, if any, um, you know, cast texture on uh, a Lee tank. I'm not sure if they were like finishing them a little bit better. Or for sure to have cast texture so i'll have to look at that and if so that's what i'll have to do oh and then the uh the mounting bolts for that and then right here is the jig for getting the appropriate sag in the front of the tracks where it it leads up to the drive sprocket so that's kind of nice that they uh, they provide that then we have the F sprue which are the um, whole superstructure sides again really nice detail on the uh, the hinges and on the doors again on the doors there's lots of nice detail in here and there are no ejector pin marks so other people have said it and you know just judging by the look of this it'd be really nice if they came out with one of these with an interior if you're into interior um interiors on your armor kits it'd be really nice especially since these hatches are so large uh both on the top and on the sides if you propped everything open like you know if you were doing a diorama or something <clears throat> with a vehicle at rest or loading ammo or supplies or whatever you could really be you could really do a good job um, painting up and detailing the inside if it had an interior. So who knows? Maybe they'll do that someday. Then we have the G sprue. Uh, you got the exhaust tips, uh, some of the tools, and then the rear of the hull. Not a whole lot to say there, other than detail looks really good. Um, this is solid here instead of open, like some kits, um, some Lee kits or, or Sherman kits or whatever, this will be open and the doors fit in place. This one's solid, so they'll just rest on top. Then we have sprue H. And uh, not very many parts on here for such a big sprue. Two, three, four, five, six parts. Looks like these might be parts for other kits because um, they are numbered. But, you know, that's not really a bad thing because a lot of times it just seems like there's a lot of extra parts that you have to bag up or just throw away. And, uh, you know, they don't include them. That's fine. Not a lot of wasted stuff. Not like other brands like Dragon where you have tons of extra parts. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing either. Um, let's see. 
These look like uh, part of the rear of the vehicle, more rivets. All that looks really good. Then we have Sprue J, which is the base of the turret and the mantlet cover, which has really nice cast texture to it. Um, the uh, gun mount itself, 30 caliber coax machine gun barrel. Uh, it's molded right on the end with a sprue gauge, so that would have to be drilled out as well as this one here for the small commander's cupola here. And that looks really nice. That's got some good detail going on it, as well as the hatches. Now the hatches do have some ejector pin marks on them, but there's no other detail, so cleaning those up would be real easy. It'd just be a matter of scraping that off or sanding it down or whatever. So that's that's not really a big deal. So that's sprue J. And then the final sprue here is um, sprue L, which are the tracks. And they look pretty good. Now, there is uh, some mold seams on the side here. But it number one, it'd be really easy to clean up. Just quick scrape with a with a new blade, and that would be fixed. Um, but these links from the adjoining track block and in connector section would cover that up, so that's not really an issue. And it looks like the the end connectors themselves, some of them look like they have a little bit of seam going on, but not really bad at all. This big long length here, there's not really any seam along that, so that's that's good. That would be real easy. To, you wouldn't have any cleanup to do. Um, there are some uh, ejector pin marks, but in my estimation, the only ones you'd really have to clean up would be the segments that are on the lower part of the track and then the parts coming up um, at an angle here and here because you can see down the ones up inside a lot of people it's like hey they're there I'm gonna clean them up that's great I personally wouldn't because I'm not gonna be looking up underneath the tracks and if you did uh, if you did a vehicle was in muddy conditions you could even cover that up if you weren't really wanting to clean it up but it wouldn't be that hard to clean those up so that's my plan is to clean the lower run and the end runs that go up to the drive sprocket and the uh and the um idler so that's sprue l so the tracks look pretty good and if you don't if you don't like uh link and length tracks you could always go with uh individual length tracks and uh do them that way because these are just the real common, I can't remember the number on them right now, T48s I believe. Just the plain rubber block tracks. So that's sprue L. All right, and then the last two parts here are the lower hull and the turret. Uh, the turret has really nice um, texture to it. There are some molding seam lines here that could probably ta be taken care of with a soft sanding sponge without uh, um, obliterating the cash texture because that cash texture is pretty deep. That's some nice screw detail there and uh, casting numbers and casting marks there. So that looks really good. The screw detail around the uh, cupola ring looks really nice. So that looks good. And then the last part is the lower hull. Uh, looks really good, detailed underneath even. Yeah, that looks really good. Nice rivet detail. Detail on these ribs down here is really fine, so looks really nice. Yep, so that is the hull, and it looks pretty square. Looks like this side right here may be a little, a little low, but I don't know. It depends on, I'm not real familiar with these hulls on these vehicles. But anyway, that is the lower hull. All right, so folks, that is pretty much it. That was just uh, hopefully a quick look 
at the M3 Lee Mid by Tacom. Kit number 2089. I um, hope it didn't bore you too much with the uh, with the review, but just kind of wanted to go through all the sprues and just kind of take a look at it and see what they look like. And again, you know, for some of the viewers that I have that might not see this review somewhere else, maybe it's helpful. But there are other reviews out there on this kit, build reviews and, you know, in deep in-depth looks at the actual components. Um, as far as the accuracy bit, accuracy bit is concerned, I couldn't really, I mean, I could probably figure it out, but off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you the difference between an early, mid, or late M3 Lee. Um, a Grant, I could tell you the difference because it's got a different turret and a couple of, like, tool options are different, but other than that, I'm just, you know, I take the uh, manufacturer's word for it and build it right out of the box. So, that is it for the review on the mid M3 Lee. So uh, I'm gonna start working on this soon, so watch for other updates. I'm not gonna do a step-by-step, in-depth um, video series on this one like I've done on some of my other kits in the past. Uh, when I get to parts that I think um, it might be helpful for beginner, beginning and intermediate modelers, um, I'll, uh, I'll pipe in then and talk about what I'm doing. Uh, I probably definitely will be talking about putting the hole together and doing the uh, the tracks. But as far as painting and weathering and all that kind of stuff, I'll touch briefly at the end on that. But I probably won't do much video on it because uh, I want to keep it simple. And I don't want to have a big, long, lengthy series. So anyway, that's it for this edition of Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the TACOM M3 Lee. So I hope you all follow along as I post uh, updates on it. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or tips on this particular kit, I would really appreciate it if you'd put them in the contents below um, so I can check it out. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me at Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all later.